In a time of great trouble, a leader will rise. And in sorrow and anger, he will lift up his eyes from a flood of oppression. From a black toiling stream If you go to the mountain God will send him a dream If you go to the mountain God will send him a dream Okay, this is a what kind of journey? It's an educational journey. It's a civil rights journey. It's a leadership development journey. Any of those things are the answer. All of those things. It's anything but playing. It's anything but wasting our time. It's anything but dragging, keeping the whole group lagging behind. We got to snap like it and go. People won't be watching us. What you want them to see? the best of beauty that we've been doing this trip for 25 years 25 years we've been coming down to some of these places longer than anyone we can walk around with our head up but it also carries with it a certain responsibility of respect for the places and the things that we'll see and the opportunity to learn people lost their life they job. They went to jail. They got beat. It means something to me. I hope you learn it means something to you. All of us should be thankful that we could come down the road on that bus, black and white, together. Some of us saw a film on the Children's March. We saw what they did to that bus. They forced it off the road. They locked the door from the outside. They smashed the windows. They threw a firebomb in there. That's what they did to people who came from the north, south. In my lifetime, we have a lot to be thankful for. We ran through about eight or nine different rainstorms last night. We had two different bus drivers. God guided us on the way. We have a lot to be thankful for. Your parents let you come. They let you come. You didn't have to pay. We have a lot to be thankful for. Three young people got shot in Erie yesterday as we left. As we left to go on a peace march, a peace, a peace journey, three people died or got shot. That's how important this trip is to creating leaders so that we can stop that kind of thing in our hometown that's affecting too many of our families. We need leadership, and it's gonna come from you young people. The 16th Street Baptist Church was probably for me the single most important site. Um, that just that particular event is so tragic, and and getting to go there and you know see what's there and how they've incorporated that into their history and how. How they've used that that experience to like move forward, and how it changed the city and that community, the particular that particularly that church community. There's a bathroom right there. Some of you could we can spread out down here and that, but make sure you get one of these. We went to 16th Street Baptist Church in in Birmingham, and again that was a very moving uh, 
experience because you look and you see these pictures of these children and at the time they were younger than I was when I was there at 12-ish, 13, possibly 11, but to see they were either my age or younger and that someone would commit an act of domestic terrorism and kill just because people want to be treated as humans. Just amazing, you know, how attentive the people were when Dr. King would, be, would speak. And many, many, I mean, you, you didn't have to tell anybody to be attentive or say anything to anybody. I don't care whether they were children, it could have been his voice, but Dr. King had a way. Do, Dr. King, Reverend Abernathy, and Reverend Shuttlesworth, and it was interesting. I wanted them, and I mainly I wanted the boys to see those men because they had someone they could emulate, and, and they had a message to give. And you'll find they, they wanted people to remember what they were saying. They didn't want their focus, your focus to be on what they had on. They wanted your focus to be on what they had to offer you. What kind of legacy do you want to leave? You know, that it becomes our responsibility to leave a legacy for the next generation to build on. Are you going to be a part of trying to make this world a better place? And that's the message I hope all of us will take from this. That we all have a responsibility. That there are many evils of racism. And that we won't be guilty of judging people by the color of their skin. And you are from? Erie, Erie Pennsylvania. Erie, Pennsylvania. Okay. That's a long way you came on the bus? Yes. That's a long ride. We also have students from South Sudan. We have students from Liberia. We have okay. students from, um, where else, Kenya? Yes, Somalia. Okay. We have kids from, uh, would I leave out any places? Mm -hmm. Cameroon, yes. Okay. We have multilingual students that, okay. uh, that are in leadership development program in, in Erie. I'm originally from West Africa. So we don't know American history, you know, so it's not something like we're familiar with. To us, it's like, you know, paradise, second, um, second heaven, you know. So after you come here and you start hearing stuff, you're just like, really? That was here? But then, like, you know, actually seeing, the, like, you know, having to go through the experience and actually see what people went through, it's like every spot is significant. We have for a long time since like neglected the history um, lesson from, uh, from the civil rights. You know, because these kids are not taught this in school. They don't know. Some of them totally have no idea, no clue. And when you tell them that, uh, really, this is what happened? And I could tell some of the girls, were like, you can see tears in their eyes mm -hmm. when they hear that. And they see that this was what happened here. My recommendation to all of you is to look in two directions as from where you sit now from where you sit today, look in two directions. Look look behind you and look to your future. And and take what you know uh, that we as a, an African American people have gone through to get to this point. The marching here and, and the dog attacks and and these four young ladies getting killed and all of the other people that's, that's gotten killed uh, in, in the struggle for freedom, uh, look back behind you to that. Look at your place in all of that and look to your future. Who has the opportunity? You do. You have the opportunity. You do. And as you carry your ball forward, you're carrying it for them. You, you, we can't look back and keep focusing on that. We gotta remember that in order to drive us forward. That's what we gotta do. And I think that's why you're here, to learn uh, some of your history here so that, so that you can uh, see what happened and be motivated, motivated by that to keep moving forward. You have an opportunity to be anything you wanna be. You have you, 
You have opportunity and you have time on your hand. I ain't got that. I don't have you. I don't have opportunity. I don't have time to accomplish anything else. Everything I, I have ever accomplished, I've already accomplished it. But if I was sitting where you are, I would figure out where I'm going and I would go to wherever it is I want to go. So I ask you to take advantage of your opportunity. Erie and help Erie. If you don't help Erie, who's going to help Erie? Everybody can't leave. I feel like you're worthy of an investment. I feel like you can respect somebody who invests in you. I think you, it teaches you how to invest in your own self, to, re, to expect a return on your investment. We all have an education. It was an investment. Some of us still paying for it. Now today is the most important day to me because these are the people who helped us organize this trip 25 years ago. And these people are in the family of Reverend Murphy who helped create our Walk in Black History. And these people have received us for the last 25 years with the best hospitality. And they're a part of history. They're on the Selma to Montgomery Trail. That might be a trivia question. Reverend Gardner's niece is the Congresswoman from the state of Alabama, the United States Congresswoman. I learned a lot uh, that I didn't know, as opposed to just what I was taught in schools. Um, I was encouraged to, to seek out a lot of information about my culture, about my heritage, just me being a black American in America. Um, that I didn't know and that I could tell others and pass on to others like, you know, my kids and, and peers who wasn't fortunate enough to go on the trip. You know, um, the experience at a young age was eye opening just because some of the things that we saw and and was just exposed to in terms of like history and, and relations between two people, you know, what I mean, between two different cultures, I should say, there's still a lot of work that has to be done. Um, there's still a lot of a cultural ignorance that I feel going on the trip a lot of a lot of kids even a lot of adults that go on the trip can uh, can kind of see and learn from I like the feelings when you walk into the um, to the different uh, places along the trip especially when you go into like places like the Southern Poverty Law Center and they have to put you through a metal detector and things like that you get to feel what um, and in essence what people had to go through back then. You're going to place it uh, on the counter or hand it to Officer Fisher once you come up. Now, if you don't have a purse or bag, any items like a cell phone, camera, keys, or loose chains in your pockets, you go in the blue bins on the counters. If you have binders, you can go ahead and take those through tablets, notebooks. You can take it through with you. It's on this side. So we always go out there and, like, you know, but this year, I don't know what happened. Bipolar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we have are the 40 people who are listed, their names, uh, and the date they were killed. These are victims of civil rights era violence. 
Um, many of them are activists, uh, were activists, I'm sorry. Um, and you'll see their stories in this first room. Now, another um, organization I want to mention is the Southern Poverty Law Center. And you may or may not have heard of this uh, organization, but it was actually based here, um, it's based here in Montgomery. It was founded here back in 1971, and in a way, it was birthed out of the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, Boris Steves and Joe Levin, who were the two co-founders, were born and raised here in Montgomery. During the Civil Rights Movement, they saw a lot of what was happening in the state of Alabama. Um, so that's why they really wanted to start this nonprofit law firm to take on civil rights cases, uh, many of which were still happening uh, post civil rights era. Oh. This is the actual corner where Rosa Parks got on the bus and was arrested. And to the left is Troy University. Any questions? Is the street named after her? I don't believe so, but let's see. It says Moon Street and Montgomery Street. That was a good question. Because there are many streets in America named after Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks Boulevard. I know they have that in, in like some of the big cities in America. Now, that's an effort you all can do it here. You want to name a street after Rosa Parks? Pick a street. Organize. Approach the city. This trip allows you to see for yourself who we really are. It helps society as a whole when we each have a fuller picture of who we are. Um, it, it, it harms both sides of the table when we are ignorant about one another. Um, so I think it's a great program specifically and first and foremost for black children definitely but also it is um helpful and necessary for all children from all types of different um diverse uh backgrounds i love um viola louisa's uh her grave marker because i like the fact that it's unfortunate that they had to uh, put the fence around it because of people defacing it but I like the fact that they, they took that stand and they did that because that is a, a great part of history. And it does show people that um, women fought, and not just women, but white women too. Here was a white lady who came down south to help the black people and lost their life. This lady, the one life, showed again that it wasn't just black people and it wasn't just children, but that it was also uh, whites and women and other professional people who made America together a better place. So Viola Luizzo uh, is someone who we tried to stop and acknowledge and pay our respect to. Someone is telling you like that's where a lot of people got killed. People like jump and it's like wow, you know, and you just walking freely with no one like you know harassing you or trying to beat you down or sending dogs at you or you know so it, it's it's like every every location have their own significant name. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Through the cold northern cities, through the warm and weeping south, words of hope, love, and comfort pouring forth from his mouth. Blessed peace, blessed freedom in an unending. Just love your brother Preach the man with a dream If you'll just love your brother Preach the man with a dream We are so excited even though it's raining on the outside We are cheerful on the inside Amen, amen Amen, amen. amen. Who would have thought 25 years ago, walking in black history would still be in existence? Amen. Thanks to this young man right here who picked up the torch Amen. that Elder Murphy started 25 years ago, and he's been carrying the torch ever since.
they're, they're waiting on us with the food at Mr. Bueller, which is only about three miles away. And we get there, they're waiting on us. Amen. I remember very vividly 25 years ago when I got a call from Reverend Murphy in Erie, Pennsylvania, asking that I would help him do this and coordinate this in. And I, it was Reverend Murphy's vision. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, you've got to find me somewhere that's for the kids to stay. And I think the first year, he brought two busloads of children down, Gary. And we were, we were fed. And I said, well, I passed a little church on the side of the road, which is Canaan Hill, which you just stopped, which you just stopped there, where you planted the tree in his honor. Uh, Reverend Murphy uh, was a great man. And then he, he took Johnny Ford and coordinated Tuskegee in. And uh, he, was, he was gracious because one year he had me to come to speak in Erie, Pennsylvania. He also had Johnny Ford to come to speak in Erie, Pennsylvania to a group of citizens in Erie that would help him raise the money to buy the buses to send you here. All right. So Reverend Murray was not formally educated and, and he would tell you that quick, but in ways of culture, in terms of love, in terms of experience, he was truly a man of God, and he was a visionary. All right. So he, when we got to Canaan Hill, I'm going to tell you how the story about the rock started. When we got to Canaan Hill, he said, what you going to tell him? <laughs> and I was a young minister 25 years ago, I had not too long got into ministry, and I was studying a story in the Bible. The story is from the book of Joshua. Now, when all the children, and I like to say this, when all of the Civil Rights Acts have been passed, young man from Nebraska and I was talking a minute ago, he said it's not over yet. It's not over. Donald Trump is now president and he's bringing up a lot of things. America to be great again. Well, when he said again, he, I was tripped up. Because America is about as great as it's ever been in my life. Not again. So, Joshua got them all across. Moses stopped. Joshua took them across the Jordan. And when Joshua got him on the other side of Jordan, God had ordained had, had commanded Joshua to get 12 men, one from each tribe. That's right. And the unique part of it, he said, I want you to pick up a stone. All right. From what is feet of the priest stood. You have traveled the road of Martin Luther. All right. Joe Lowry. All right. George Wallace. All of the great, you are traveling that trail. They feast have pundit where yours are stepping. All right. Joshua told him, so when you get the stone, I want you to pile it up. Yes, sir. And create an altar. And in creating that altar, they just did it. And they said, now what, Joshua? Joshua said, nothing. Hmm. You got to wait till your children grow up. Come on now. And when your children ask you what mean these stones, mm -hmm. then your job would be to tell your children where God has brought you from. I ask both of you today, all of you from Erie, Pennsylvania, before you leave here, pick up a stone. It's inexpensive. Put it with your jewelry. Put it with things that you cherish. All right. And you keep that stone. Yes, and when you get to college, you, when you get your jewelry box, girls, your stone will be in it. And somebody one day is <laughs> going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What means <laughs> this stone? All right. And then I want you to tell them it was, in, it was in 2017. Mm -hmm. I was 12 years old. I was 14 years old. I was 16 years old. Uh, they had a program called Walk in Black History. It was, it was designed that young people 
will learn where God has brought our people from. All right. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. Velma Murphy came from down here. All that right. was Reverend Murphy's wife. And uh, it was through that relationship that we were able to make the connection that has stood the test of time for 25 years. And I can tell you without a doubt, there is a student or two sitting here today that will keep this trip going on for the next 25 years. Because of the in 1992, I didn't know that this trip was going to last 25 years. In 1992, I didn't even know where I was going. And that I worked in the mayor's office as the only man and the only black in the mayor's office. Reverend Murphy came to the mayor and told her he wanted to put a trip together to go south. And she went out and helped him raise $2,500 a piece from area local uh, college presidents to purchase uh, or reserve the first two buses. We also brought two vans and about three cars yeah. along on that first trip and about 90 students. We had teachers, we had students as young as six or seven years old and as old as seniors in high school. And over the years, the cost of that bus that went from 2,500 to 4,500 to 6,500 to 10,000 to 11,700 this year. So we went from two buses over several years down to one bus. And the students that I will introduce to you momentarily here are the students who earned the right and had the privilege of coming on this trip so that they could learn about walking in black history so that they can understand what tolerance is, so they can appreciate tolerance education, how to handle a bully, how to, how to uh, accentuate and celebrate the differences between us right. and not to focus on, on, uh, on those things. And so, uh, again, I thank uh, Pastor Gardner for helping give me the courage, the strength, the guidance, the knowledge, the confidence, and the support to go back to Erie, Pennsylvania and stand up. And the people in Erie, they call me radical. They think I'm militant. But I can show them some more militant and radical people than me in Erie. <laughs> They're less educated right. about the truth. I've, I've been armed with the truth. I've been given the knowledge of the suffering and the price that people have paid for us to have a, a better life in America, not just in the South, if you came up to Erie, Pennsylvania today, you would think you have to fight this fight all over again. Because I live in a city where we have two or three black policemen. We have one black fireman. Out of 100 teachers, two of them are black. 98% uh, of the teachers are white. 60% of the students are black. No black bankers, few black insurance people. You would wonder, what did we do? What did you sacrifice for? For us to live up north in those kind of conditions. As we left our community to come down on a peace march, to recognize nonviolence, three young people these people's age shot, each, shot, them, shot somebody. On the day we left, I believe one of them died. That's the story of our community. The young people don't have any hope. These students will go back to Erie, Pennsylvania knowing that hope is alive and hope is available to, uh, along with the education and the learning about who they are. There's a, a plethora of things that I, I learned, that uh, I was shown, uh, that just aided me as a person, period, because leaving the trips, I always felt like, okay, I have to do something. If I don't do nothing, I gotta do something. 
you know what I'm saying, in terms of just being productive and moving forward and trying to be an influence to my peers that are minorities and, and add something to the culture, you know, especially since I wanted to rap. So, you know what I mean? That made me look at the history of hip hop a little bit more and want to dwell in the, where did this come from? Why is this that way? You know what I'm saying? Why is it so pro-black when it was first, I guess, discovered or invented or, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to call it. When it first entered into the culture, you know what I'm saying, of American culture as a whole, why was it like this? And I got that answer and I believe the questions came from going on the Walking Black History trip and just learning about, you know, what jazz musicians was, was going on and who was doing what at this time in American society as opposed to, you know, we were always just told, like, you know what I mean? You know what was going on during JFK, what he was about. I figured out why he was like that, why he, he was such a compassionate president, why Dr. King marched, you know what I'm saying? Why Malcolm X felt the way that he felt and other people that surrounded him that also felt the same way that you really don't talk about. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, it was learning, definitely learning, man. Learning experience about a lot of things. The museum, the Carver Museum on Tuskegee's campus, to learn about this man um, who was for the most part self-taught and was brilliant a genius who came up with and created so many things that are in use today that is what makes you proud of who you are that is what gives you the armor that you need to um, resist the images that are constantly uh, coming at you and that we are constantly being bombarded with about who we are George Washington Carver and the peanut, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know. I didn't know the man had so many uses, you know what I mean? Found so many uses for the the peanut plant and 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 I didn't know that it was more than just botany for him, that he also was a thinker that that cared about, you know, African American culture and, and trying to preserve it the best he can. How he was such a thinker and such an advocate for the advancement of minorities as a whole. We don't live in a, in a time now where we can just uh, have an expectation of things going our way, that you're going to get lucky. Now, one of the boys asked me why uh, Washington was a segregationist. There are a lot of people who didn't believe in integration. There are some people even today that think integration was the worst thing ever happened to black people. Why? Because who know slavery. why? Because hmm? we're still not accepting. No, not because of slavery. Because, and we're still not accepting. Even that's a good one. We're still not accepted. But what? Well, I'm looking for something else. Like back then? They actually have their community, the black community, where you have like, you know, fewer lawyers, like, you know, everyone was important. Nowadays, like, you know, you have white people struggling to actually get up there and you see them. So it's like, instead of us having our own community where we can all be important people, now we're like struggling, like, you know, and it's barely, you can, like he was saying. That's like, a good start. That's a good start. She got the fundamentals of it. But when there was segregation, we had black teachers, black hotels. Black baseball teams, black basketball teams, black tailors, black theaters, black everything. We had it. And that there and it wasn't for I'm black and I'm proud. It was for the money, for the economics of it. You could hire somebody. That black uh, uh, what's her name? Madam CJ Walker was the first millionaire, first woman millionaire, not the first black woman millionaire, the first woman millionaire. Sarah selling what? Hair products. How many of y'all still mess with your hair? Put stuff on it. One week, the next week. It's a thriving business. And it all, she recognized that. And that. But before integration, when there was segregation, we had those kind of opportunities and things. So there are some people who believe integration uh, really set us back. Because now we're not motivated to have our own. 
We won't even shop at our own people's place. That's why we tried to do a lot of shopping at people's places when we came down here. Even if we only spent one dollar or two dollars or fifty cents, the economic impact for them uh, adds up. Oh, uh, we could have took all our money back to Erie and took it to the Mill Creek Mall and got nothing back for it. Not even the benefit of somebody be even black on the cash register taking it. If it's one thing you'll notice down here, you got black people at the airport, the bus station, the phone company, and that uh, working on the pole, working in the hole that you dig in, the construction, they working in all that kind of stuff. We don't see that in Erie. It's hard to get motivated that you can do that without seeing it. You be around here long enough, you'll believe in, your, oh, I can do that. Oh, I want to do that. That's why it's all connected. But your education is important. It's the most important thing. It's the most valuable thing you have. The Tuskegee Airman trip, it just, I mean, it made me feel different. It changed, it almost changed my views on some things, just listening. It was, it was quite inspirational. Well, we leave here, if we leave at 9 o'clock in the morning, it's 10 o'clock in Atlanta. And then it'll take two hours to get to, we won't get to Atlanta until noon. That's why tomorrow morning getting up and getting out of here on time is crucial. Thank you for allowing not only me, but everyone in this room the opportunity to not only, ex uh, not only see what happened in the past to get us to where we are right now, but to also know what is going to happen. Thank you for allowing us a chance to see the footsteps of the past and allow us to pave a better and brighter future. I just want to say, so when you get to our age, stay connected with each other and stay engaged. So this was a wonderful evening for us to experience this with you all. So please let us know how we can help along the way. And if you come or if your family or friends come to Tuskegee, let them know that we're here. We'd like to visit with them as well, okay? All right. And you all are some very talented people. I'm like, can you do something with them, okay? Woo! I have to say, Gary. Gary and I, his parents were in the NAACP. My parents were in the NAACP. His parents were in politics. Everybody that came to Erie that was African American or wanted to do anything with the African American community, they either went to his parents or they went to my parents. Because back in the day, you couldn't stay in a hotel, so you had to stay in people's homes. So we had the opportunity to really get to meet a lot of people. 
and uh, through the NAACP and the Urban League and all of the different organizations, Urban Coalition, we got an opportunity to do a lot of things at a very young age. And that's why we stay committed to the community, because you can't do it by yourself. So thank you so very much for being here. We do want to thank our hostess and hosts. We appreciate you opening up not only your home, but the community center so that we can come out and socialize. So we would have an opportunity for our young men and young women to interact together in a spirit that's up here, where they're not fighting and arguing and putting each other down. So we can celebrate being on the same team, on the same page, unity in the community. Because we know we face an awesome challenge when we go back to Erie. Area in need of our leadership. They didn't reduce five schools down to two. No one knows how that's going to turn out. Everybody's worried, including some of you. But you have come on a trip that has give, have given you some skills and some resources and some tools to provide some leadership. The best one to make the school work is you. Is you. If you provide the leadership, lead the other kids, and show them the way, we can have unity in Erie High School. Okay, we're at the, the uh, Martin Luther King Center, the church here on the right, Ebenezer Baptist Church, is the church where Dr. King's mom was murdered at playing the piano on Sunday morning. You can go in there, we can walk through the left, we can walk through the right, over here is the fountain, the eternal flame. Dr. King's uh, crib and his wife's crib. On the left uh, is the historic site. <laughs> he from Erie, Pennsylvania, Bernard Bradley. And that. His parents grew up right down the street from the center. That house at the end of uh, June or uh, Thompson Street, that was his parents' home. Uh, without the struggle of those folks, we would not even be here, you know. Uh, even though um, the civil rights plus the struggle for colonialism in Africa, you know, all like help each other. I see a lot of good, but a lot of good comes with a lot of sacrifice. And that's just, it just is repeated all through history. dark waters your proud city stands with its white marble pillars and its black and calloused hands in a crack of loud thunder midst the moans and the screams You can murder the dreamer, but you can't kill his dream. You can murder the dreamer, 
But you can't kill his dream. I think that's what basically the trip is for. Like, giving these kids, you know, that um, mindset that even though you're in this situation, it's up to you. You Like, you know, yeah, you might not see it in your surrounding, but you can make it. You can actually be that person you want to be. You don't have to, like, you know, um, be afraid or hold back or think you're not important. You know, everyone is a leader. You just got to, like, you know, take that out. And that's why, and not even, like, the trip, that's what this whole organization is about. That's what Mr. Horton teaches the kids here. Being a leader. Cause he'd been to the mountain and he'd seen that promised land. And he held a bright future in the palm of his hands. Saw the children of sorrow in an un bending stream they smiled when he left them cause he left them his dream yes he smiled when he left them cause he left them See the passion that the people have when we meet them and um, we want to hear their story. To be able to take 50 kids down south to have them sit and listen to a person um, tell their story after the Edmund Pettus Bridge to um, have them sit and listen to a woman tell their story about how she was beat when she was 12 by police officers and things like that I think is amazing and I think it's one of those things that you can't fully grasp the entire concept of it unless you've been there. Oh,